Well, good morning and welcome to Fireside Chat. We're being able to film again outdoors and that is terrific. We wanna take advantage of this good weather as long as we can. Although I'm feeling it's a little bit chilly in the air, but we're gonna keep at it until it, uh, the, the skies turn gray and we gotta move back inside. Uh, I wanna begin by saying thank you again to all of you uh, for the ability to manage during these, this pandemic and to, to manage behaviors and practices and keeping being safe. You know, we, we loosely say it takes a village, but the reality is if all our residents and our staff are not doing their individual part, it doesn't add up to a collective good outcome. And we have at this time, no viruses uh, in our community. And that really has a lot to do with how everyone is conducting themselves. So thank you. I want to, uh, to make sure that we always recognize that it's the individual effort that matters. Now, um, I am working on a vaccine myself. Uh, and this might come to a surprise, but you know, Lori is working on dealing with all of the issues related to the pandemic. But I have been working on a vaccine myself. And this vaccine, it's not finished yet. It's gonna take some time. But if you recall last week, a lot of our residents had a problem with Comcast in the central tower and couldn't get reception. And the rest of you may have had Comcast issues all along. Well, I've been working on a Comcast vaccine. And the Comcast vaccine is one in which when you are inoculated, you will have consistently good viewing. Your picture and your sound will be outstanding. Um, it'll also lower your own blood pressure and your anxiety level. And I have a high degree of confidence that this is going the right direction. Now, we don't know whether or not this is going to uh, work in terms of antibody testing, where if you were to uh, be tested for the uh, Comcast vaccine and you were sitting with your neighbor watching TV, if they would have the same viewing experience that you have, uh, having been inoculated. But we're gonna give this a try. We'll see where it goes. Um, it won't require FDA approval, so that's certainly encouraging. So hopefully this will be uh, forthcoming shortly. Now, in all seriousness, Comcast is the bane of all of our existence, and we try very much to work with them to get an outcome. Unfortunately, Comcast is the only game in town, and they know it, and they don't respond as well as we would like. Now, we'll keep working on them, and we'll push hard to get uh, improvements and changes, but maybe that vaccine will come through too. Now, onto the more serious stuff. Let me pass things off to, to George, uh, George Counts, and he will talk a little bit more about the COVID. Thanks, and I'll catch up with you shortly with some announcements. Hello, my name is George Counts. I'm a member of the COVID Task Force and head of the Horizon House Health Advisory Group. And I'd like to say a few words about our policy regarding residents who have been away from Horizon House for more than 24 hours. We've had to make certain changes in this policy, and I wanted to share with you our rationale for these changes. You know that we have not had any cases of COVID among residents in independent living or supportive living in several months now. And we're very fortunate and very lucky that this has happened. And you know that if we get introduction of COVID into Horizon House, it is likely to occur from one of two ways. Either someone from the outside brings it into Horizon House or a resident here goes out, encounters the, the virus in a high risk situation and brings it back into our community. So we have had a policy that residents who have been away are required to go into quarantine and call the clinic until a, a, a check can be made of whether or not they have been in a high risk or low risk situation. And the way we have had it in the past is that residents could phone in and discuss the situation and do the screening with the resident, with the clinic staff before they return. It's that we have had to make a minor change. Nowadays, if a resident has been away, the clinic will ask, have you been in a high risk situation? That will be defined as 
more than 15 minutes, inability, more than 15 minutes of contact, inability to remain six feet apart in distancing, and inability for all persons to be completely masked at all times. That's the definition of a high-risk situation. If that is the case, the clinic staff will ask, when did this exposure to this potential situation occur? That's why we have to introduce a new situation. Ordinarily, if a resident were to get him or herself tested and the tests were negative, then no further quarantine was necessary. The change is that we have new guidelines from the King County Public Health Department in that if there has been a possible exposure, one should wait three to five days before doing a test so that the test can be more accurate. So that's the change we've had to introduce into our policy. Nowadays, if it has been more than four days since the high possible exposure occurred, a test can be done and if the test is negative, no further quarantine is not. If it has not been more than three to five days, perhaps on the day of the return, then the, the resident should quarantine until four days later when a test can then be done. And if that test is negative, no further quarantine is necessary. The testing availability is fairly uh, free around the city of Seattle and King County. The city has three testing sites, two are drive up, one in the north and one in the south, down by Soto, and one is walk up. From friends who have had the testing done, it is free. You sign up for it, make an appointment. Friends of mine said that it took no more than five to 10 minutes wait, five to 10 minutes completing all the paperwork and the and doing the test and the results are back in 48 hours or so. So those are the new policy, that's the new policy regarding residents returning who have been away for more than 24 hours. If there are any questions about this, feel free to contact either myself or any member of the health advisory group. Dr. Zabe Bergman, Finley Wallace, Jeff Graham, or Margaret Burke. Thanks very much and continue to take care. It's my pleasure to introduce our newest Horizon House residents. John King was born in Seattle and has lived in Nebraska, Colorado, and the District of Columbia. He majored in history and earned both his JD and LLM degrees in law school with a career practicing business law. John is a member of Fixed Democracy First, a civic group focused on campaign and finance reform. He is interested in politics and sports, has served in the US military with an honorable discharge, and is affiliated with the Episcopal Church. A fun fact, both of John's sisters, Margaret King and Phoebe Ann Moore, are also Horizon House residents. Welcome to Horizon House, John. Bill and Carrie Lauman are both natives of Seattle, and between the two of them, have also lived in Issaquah, Bellevue, and Muckleteo, as well as Palo Alto, California. They also have a second, hand, second home near Plain, Washington on the Wenatchee River where they enjoy spending time. Bill is a retired banker who earned his BA from Stanford, has attended Pacific Coast Banking School, and is a retired Coast Guard reservist. He is also past treasurer and endowment chair of the East Shore Unitarian Church and has also served as an elder hostel leader. Bill is interested in Lewis and Clark and is a former hiker. With a BA from Stanford in history and political science, a teaching certificate and doctor of law, Carrie is a retired lawyer and teacher with a history of volunteer work, most recently as board of their condominium association and past president and board at the East Shore Unitarian Church. Her hobbies include gardening, cooking, walking, wildflowers, birds, reading, and politics. Bill would like to share that he is hard of hearing, uses a walker, and is a friendly person, while Carrie shares that she looks forward to Horizon House residents and activities. Welcome to Horizon House, Bill and Carrie. We are very excited to join the one new hire that has joined us this month. Sarah Prill is our new nutrition diet manager. 
When you see her, please help me welcome her to Horizon House. Hi, I'm Charles Williams, Director of Supported Living at Horizon House. I'm here today because everybody knows that I look good on camera. Just kidding. I'm here to give you a few updates about supported living. First topic I'd like to talk about is um, our recent outside visitations that have started. We've been very excited to have that program going, reuniting a lot of our uh, supported living residents with their family members. As we all know, they have been separated for so long and these have been some really nice reunions to see. Um, and thank you to our life enrichment team for helping to coordinate those very touching reunion moments. Next thing I wanna talk about is the phased reopening, uh, the Safe Start Assisted Living Facilities. Um, the government, the governor, King County Public Health, they finally rolled out the mandates for that. Um, it's a four part phase reopening. Uh, right now we're in phase one. We meet all the requirements except for the, the community um, infection rate. That has to be at a certain level and we have not achieved that yet. Um, each phase of the reopening has things that we will have to achieve to move forward with that. Um, currently, there are no visitations allowed inside the center. Um, those will not come up until uh, phase four. Um, so right now there is no visitors allowed into the center. Um, we are continuing to do things like screen all visitors uh, that come into Horizon House. Uh, we are monitoring and assessing residents every shift and all staff who report to support a living, obviously they do still get the screenings as well. So more information on that later as we move forward through the uh, phases of reopening. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get through those as soon as possible so we can uh, resume visitations into supported living. Next topic I'd like to talk to you about is uh, risk assessment. This is also a new mandate that's come down from uh, part of the reopening. All of our residents in supported living who leave uh, supported living leave Horizon House for either a medical appointment or some sort of visit such as a dentist or to see their primary care physician, they do have to have a risk assessment completed and this will determine based upon the risk uh, assessment if they're low, medium or high, uh, whether or not they will have to go into quarantine upon return to uh, supported living. We are encouraging all residents who have medical appointments to um, see if their provider will do a virtual uh, appointment. A lot of doctors in the community are doing those now. So we are encouraging that. So there is no risk of quarantine when they, whenever they return to uh, supported living. Last thing I wanna to talk to you about is just a couple of infection control reminders. Obviously we're living in a very different time these days. Uh, COVID um, is a very easily transmitted uh, virus. And as a nurse, I feel compelled to remind you of a couple of things. It's very important that you wear your mask at all times. Masks are the, the best way to keep you safe and present, prevent you from uh, getting the virus or transmitting it to somebody else if you happen to be infected. Social distancing, making sure that you're maintaining that social distance, uh, two arms lengths away from people. And then of course, hand hygiene. Make sure that you're always usually using hand sanitizer, washing your hands, uh, those uh, three things will help to mitigate you getting the uh, virus uh, transmitted to you. So just some reminders about that. Hope you are all staying safe out there. Uh, hope to see you all again real soon and we'll continue to take care of your family members and supported living. Thank you for entrusting them with us and take care. Good morning. This is Eve, the clinic nurse here at Horizon House. For those of you who don't know me yet, and welcome to the newcomers who've moved into Horizon House during this rather intense period. And here's hoping it won't always be like this. So I've got three topics today. Clinic services that we provide downstairs on the B level, B1 in the North Tower. Um, the upcoming flu shots, which people have started to ask about, and also my favorite topic, and maybe yours, constipation, and how to avoid it, which is the most important thing. So the clinic is what is called a fee-for-service clinic. We used to have a nurse practitioner, and we could bill your insurance, but we have um, 
since gotten rid of that model. And so we cannot bill insurance. So all our services are billable uh, privately, private pay. So you need to consider that before you come down. And we will always tell you how much it is. And it's very reasonable for all the services we do. So just come and talk to us if that's uh, an issue for you. Some of the services we provide, the first one that uh, is very helpful is medication management. If for any reason uh, managing your meds is difficult or overwhelming or confusing, or you just want a break from it, we can take it over. We will get orders from your primary care physician and any other physicians involved. Um, we coordinate with our pharmacy, Kelly Ross Long-Term Care. And we also keep up to date with any changes that you uh, have to your medication program with your doctor visits. So we keep a, a handle on all of that and can manage it for you. And there is a fee for that. And you can be on a weekly program or a daily program if you need to come and see us every day and need a little bit more oversight than a weekly program. So if you have any questions about that, just come and chat with us or give us a call at 3210. Um, flu shots. We are having Bartels come in uh, to Horizon House two days. Uh, the first one will be September 23rd and the second one will be October 28th. Um, we don't have any more details than that right now. We will be making appointments but don't call us yet. We'll let you know in the alert when we want you to call us and make an appointment as to what time you're gonna come and get your flu shot. And we, of course, encourage everybody to come and get them. If you get them at your primary care physician's office, then just let us know and we can make a record of that because we like to keep up to date with what everybody's doing around that issue. Alrighty, now we go on to constipation. So it kind of uh, piggybacks on last month's little talk about dehydration because that's one of the causes, the leading causes of constipation. I find when I talk to people is their, uh, their lack of fluid intake. So remember six to eight glasses of water tea is good, coffee is a diuretic, so it's not such a great fluid. You also get fluid from the vegetables you eat and melons and high, high water content uh, vegetables and fruits. So that counts as well. Bear in mind fiber rich foods. Fiber is non-digestible by uh, your stomach. And so what happens is it acts like a little broom and it goes through your intestines and it picks up the waste matter and makes a nice bulky soft stool for you to pass so you don't have to push which is not a good thing and puts your blood pressure up. Um, everybody has their own pattern but it would be a wonderful thing if you were going every day because you really want to get rid of all that waste you don't want to be carrying it around inside of you for days and days it's not make you feel good as you know. So um, exercise is also something that helps stimulate the movement of uh, matter through you, through your intestines. So exercise is really great. And of course, stress, which we're probably all under right now, can really lead to uh, constipation, believe it or not. So if you're having problems, if your stools are less frequent or they're harder to pass, or you feel like you're not finished once you've gotten off the toilet, um, make sure you get on it straight away either increase your fluid intake, increase fiber, uh, high fiber foods like whole bran cereals, breads, not white, brown is good. Lots and lots of vegetables is wonderful. Meat doesn't have any fiber in it, so that doesn't help, okay? Um, yeah, so yeah, get on it. Uh, Stool softeners can help. Miralax is a great thing, but also you need to really keep up with your fluids. How do you know you're drinking enough for your bowels and your general health is that you really want to have light colored urine, like very, very light straw. If it starts getting darker, you are on the road to dehydration. You're already actually there. So we don't want dark urine, all right? So let's keep up with our fluids. Let's keep our bowels regular and happy. If you have any questions, 
um, call me. I'm happy to talk over any bowel issues with you. And that is another actual service that I just want to say that I provide at the clinic um, is triaging any issues that you have or you want to talk over a topic with someone. I'm that person. If you feel like that would be helpful, I would love to, to help you sort out maybe where you need to go or give you some advice if I have it. Um, we also provide wound care services. Uh, I do ear cleanings if that's appropriate and you, and you feel like your ears are plugged. Um, we have an audiologist who comes every couple of weeks. We have a podiatrist that comes every month and also a dental hygienist. So let me think any other services. We clean hearing aids. Um, right now, I think off the top of my head, that's about it. So have a lovely day. A month ago, we were $40,000 away from our goal. And today I'm delighted to report that we're almost there. So thank you. I don't know how it is with you, but there is so much human suffering, human pain, human misery, that almost every day I get another appeal for support from one group or two groups or how many groups, some of whom deserve my support. And surprising to me, I am also giving more to a political party and to political candidates this year than I ever did before. So if you're like me, the claims on your interest and your contributions are greater than they've ever been. And in the midst of all of that, we have almost reached our goal. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your commitment to Horizon House residents. Well, again, thank you so much for your support of Partners in Caring. And uh, as you know, there are several funds that this uh, Partners in Caring supports. Probably the one we're most familiar with, as you know, is the uh, Residence Assistance Fund, which uh, helps those of our neighbors who sometimes, for no reason of their own, uh, their funds are exhausted. And uh, you know, one of the nicest things about living here at Horizon House, for which I am so grateful, is that no resident has ever been forced to leave Horizon House because of lack of funds. That's a wonderful thing to think about. Uh, another fund that's a very important one is the Staff Assistance Fund, the Scholarship Fund. Uh, it's quite flexible and very generous. And uh, staff members have said that this has been, really, this fund has been instrumental in helping them achieve their professional and educational goals. So that's another wonderful attribute of Horizon House. And finally, there is the, uh, what's it called? the Area of Greatest Need Fund. And uh, this also includes the, um, the GEM Grant Fund. Uh, the, they fund things that are not necessarily in the Horizon House budget, but are things that make it a little special for those of us who live here. The last year, I have a list of some of the projects they included last year. We have new computers for the computer room, um, memory support, decor improvements, um, massage chairs for B3 and the support of living third floor, the uh, virtual reality experience. You remember we did that this last year, a very interesting experience. And um, also an exercise bike for a supported living. 
Uh, by the way, the um, the next deadline for the um, the uh, gem grant uh, is on September 18th. So for those of you who may be thinking of a project that uh, needs funding, uh, remember September 18th, and you can get applications in the uh, philanthropy office. So again. Uh, we appreciate your support so much. And for those of you who have not yet contributed, please consider doing so. Any gift, no matter the size, is appreciated. And uh, we just are very grateful to everyone for all you do to support Partners in Caring. Thank you. Okay, now for some announcements. Uh, the grocery van. We'll still offer the $10 ride share for reimbursement for grocery store runs. We'll offer the $10 reimbursement for grocery deliveries. And while it is different, we do want to encourage everyone to, to consider online grocery. It's not the same, and it's not maybe what uh, you would like, but it is a way in which you can beat the problem. And Kiona at Concierge is always there to help. And she is delightful, and she's very informative, and please use her when you have uh, issues and questions around online ordering and which ones are the best solutions. Another issue I know that's been very controversial has been our directory. You know, here we print a directory twice a year and have done so since the beginning of time. And this directory left out a lot of names, left out a lot of nicknames, uh, in some cases left people out entirely. And what happened on that was that we now started to rely on using our database to pull the names of our residents to insert into the directory rather than doing it through a very laborious manual process. These are the kinds of things that we need to do better over time. Well, in fairness to, to us, uh, you know, we, we think that is the right move, but we didn't really proof it well enough and we didn't have enough uh, scrutiny of the, of the names and the, the, um, the way it laid out. So we're making some corrections. We'll get better on it. Uh, it's not an intent to decrease the, the value or the look and the feel of the directory. We know it's important to everyone. I use it in the same way everyone else uses it. So if you would just bear with us while we sort through this different approach, our goal is to get the directory back to how it was and in a way that is really efficient and uh, easy to produce. Another topic is we are authorizing some visitors into the building. We're trying to make some exceptions. We do understand that, that uh, you have to conduct your life in business. And what was once a temporary pandemic issue now is uh, unforeseen future, right? We don't know how long this is gonna continue. So we do wanna make sure that people can have some normalcy to their business uh, day to day. And so we will make uh, exceptions. Uh, we'd like you to submit your, your uh, request and the details of the visitor to the front desk so we can approve it and make sure there isn't any hiccup when that visitor comes to deal with your taxes or your legal affairs or other business or insurance matters. Uh, and the, and the, the, the approach will be to talk to uh, a reception and uh, make your request and uh, submit for approval. This is not gonna be a bureaucratic process. This is just to make sure we're all on the same page and that visitors don't get turned away who should be able to come and help you. I have a couple things also on master planning. I get varying input from uh, people with respect to their views on the carpet. I have had, I had one yes, or last week when we had our barbecue, people were effusive about the carpet. They loved it. I had one the day before where it said it was the worst thing they'd ever seen. Well, the good thing about carpet is it's not like concrete. It's not permanent. If it turns out that this carpet is not of everyone's appeal, then we will make sure that in the remodel of the lobby and other areas, we'll replace it according to what those architects and designers think. And that will be just fine for everyone and maybe residents will have a little bit more involvement in that process. But we felt it was important just simply to clean the place up 
Let's not have it look like it's run down. Let's make sure that we get paint on the walls, carpet laid down, and then we can work on the details and figure out what changes would really appeal to most people in the future. I do want to mention that we are having uh, new architects. We have had the same architects for over 25 years. They've done a lot of good work and they've also run their course. So Grant Hildebrandt has recommended four names of architects that he respects and George Lotchke knows them and also respects them. And Eli Lemansky and I have interviewed them each twice for uh, roughly an hour a piece. I, I did one set of interviews for an hour a piece and then with Eli for over an hour. And we'll be meeting with George and with Grant to tell them what our thinking is about the four candidates, all of whom are qualified and would be a great uh, addition to Horizon House. Uh, and then we'll decide on who that architect is and then we'll begin to involve them in our future projects. There are certain projects that are underway or far enough along that it doesn't make sense to change architects. So we will have some legacy projects that will be uh, done by our existing architects until we transition to our new architects. One of those is going to be our salon uh, facelift. We're going to have the salon closed for a couple of months while we redo the interior, make it a little bit more contemporary, make it a good experience. It's not changing what we do there so much as it is providing new equipment, new lighting, new flooring, new walls, and new plumbing so that it all works a little bit more to do more manicures and pedicures and more, more hair styling. Now, here, we are a resident-driven community and we really do like resident input. And I hear a lot of resident input and I'm glad to get it. Now I have a very important one for you to chime in on. And that is that we're looking for resident input on some new contractors. Uh, your discerning view of the video on YouTube that you can access through HH Connect will give you an idea of the contractors we're looking at for the future. And I'll want you to look at that video and then give me feedback. I particularly like their ability to cut wood. It is a, it's novel. They've got a good grip on things. And I think you're gonna appreciate the kind of contractors we're looking at to help make Horizon House continue to look better. So you need to look at this on YouTube and you can find that YouTube address on, her, uh, on HH Connect. Take a look at the video and see if you don't agree with me that this is the direction that is going to make Horizon House look the way you want it to look in the future. So I look forward to your response. Now for some new openings. You know, we talk a lot about what we can't do. Sometimes it's good to talk about what we can do. And what we can do is have the terrace lounge open. It's cordoned off, but there's a way in which people can be in that space and have a chance to visit with one another in a safe way. So we feel good about that. The Bistro Grab and Go, you know, it's a little bit of a change up from just having a to-go menu uh, or, or a, a um, uh, delivery uh, uh, menu. Uh, so you can come down and you can grab something and then go to your place of uh, comfort for, for dining. Uh, the coffee bar is opened up so that, you know, I, I like my coffee in the morning and I don't know what I'd do without it. So for those of you who like to have somebody else prepare the coffee for you, that coffee bar is set up every morning and it's free, and so come on down and get a cup of coffee and get a jolt for your day. Uh, the outdoor barbecue on Thursdays, uh, is gonna, we're gonna have a grab and go uh, barbecue for our staff coming up this, this week. Uh, in fact, it will have already occurred by the time you read this, but we're also gonna do everything we can to keep these barbecues going outside until the weather turns sour on us and we bring things back inside. You can also use the uh, the chapel in the forum and you need to make those reservations at the front desk so that we don't uh, overcrowd it but we welcome you to use that space as a way to uh, to uh, have visitation with friends and uh, have a little change in venue. Uh, the ter if you saw the pictures of the terrace lounge and the bistro those openings uh, I think they look good uh, you know we look forward to in the not too distant future of remodeling all of our dining facilities so that'll be a project we'll talking, be talking to more about in the latter part of the year. Uh, some things you don't necessarily see are things that Sean and facilities work on, and they just did a whole big job of replacing the East and uh, Central and East Tower water pumps. These are big, huge uh, projects that, you know, they're behind the walls, you don't see them, but that's what ensures that your hot and cold water is gonna run well. 
And you know, a lot of this stuff is 30, 40, 50 years old. So we rely on facilities to solve some of those problems that aren't so visible, uh, but make a big difference in the way things operate. SL Outdoor Visitation kicked off here soon. Uh, it will be uh, an opportunity for residents to, uh, in supported living, to visit with family members in a safe way off Terry with some uh, isolation with uh, plexiglass uh, uh, dividers. And we're hoping that this will give uh, supported living residents an opportunity to reconnect with family. We know what a hardship isolation is for people, and we're hoping very much that this helps mitigate it. And there will be an independent living version of that that we will think through and get back to on. That's all I have, and I hope that this has been helpful, informative, and uh, our next uh, uh, fireside chat will be September 25th, 2020, and that's at 10 a.m. And please go to YouTube, check out the video on our new contractors, and give me your feedback. I think you're going to agree. I really know how to pick them. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon.